One of the things that I see out there on the web today is this debate between learning music theory and application. What's more important, music theory or application? Well, they're both really important. Just gonna share some insight into how I learned as a guitar player, and it got me from starting out playing guitar at zero at 11 or 12 years old to playing gigs in a year and a half's time. But you don't need to practice 10,000 hours a week to get gig ready, to play leads in front of people. You could play solos in front of people in just that amount of time if you keep up with about 15 minutes a day of practice. Now here's how I did it and how I got much better guitar quicker than somebody who may have been learning music theory. My, background, my background's a little different. I didn't get started learning theory. Now hear me out with this because I know the theory crowd's gonna say, well, you're missing out on all this valuable information. Yeah, I didn't have the know-how of how the fretboard was connected and why, but if you learn the application, you're going to feel the guitar. You're going to see the guitar as a bunch of shapes and patterns, which is easier than trying to see the guitar as a bunch of notes. So for example, the pentatonic scale, which everybody learns, is just a bunch of patterns. But within those patterns, can you play cool sounding notes? Yeah, sure. There's the pattern, that's the technical. What do you do with just that one shape? If I was told I can only play this one shape my whole life and make a solo out of it, well, what notes work well together? That's where the application kicks in. That's what you have to figure out, so I know. I can make a solo out of one position based on application. Now, where do you learn how to do these things? You find your favorite guitar players. Think of your favorite guitar players, whether it might be Clapton, might be David Gilmore, could be Gary Rossington from Leonard Skinner. I'm a big Leonard Skinner guy. And how I started out was learning and just listening to that guitar player over and over. I listened to Gary Rosington, Alan Collins, Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page, and I was listening to them all the time, just thinking about the guitar itself. And then I'd go home after listening, and i think, okay, that was a cool lick, let's try and recreate it. So I'd sit there and like try and mimic the bends. I'd be playing alongside them, have my computer up. And a good example would have been like Gary Rosington, that smell. <laughs> So one of the things I learned through this little lick right here, just by playing it over and over again, was like, huh, the pentatonic scales are connected a lot more than just patterns here, but they, we can play between them. You see how they're all connected in some way. You've got these bridges between them, but that's something that You'll, yeah, you'll see it in a technical sense, they'll write it down in the books, but in terms of feeling it and seeing the guitar as these shapes and patterns, that's something you learn through application. So that'd be something that I got out of a song. These bends, I used to study his bends so much, like pinch harmonics in those bends. I'd figure out, how is he making that sound? Then I'd learn about pinch harmonics and I'd learn about how to make that sound with a pick. And through studying him and other guitar players, you learn techniques like these. Or like. Or like. And then you learn how to solo through watching other people play. For two years, I had worked on many different songs. I basically studied Leonard Skinner, Led Zeppelin, The Who, Eric Clapton, Cream, and then Molly Hatchet, 38 Special, just a bunch of Southern rock, classic rock. Allman Brothers was a big part of that. And I was still learning, I'm still learning from them because it's, it's amazing how they tie the scales together and they're using different modes. But you're not having to think about modes, you're just saying, oh, these notes fit well together. You'll be a better guitar player if you think about which notes work well together. So if I'm playing in a basic 
position one of the pentatonic scale. I need to know which notes I can bend, which licks I can play in that position. It's gonna change your life because you're not just thinking about theory. You're like, oh, well, I just know these notes work. That'd be better for you than just getting into theory and thinking about the notes themselves. Application right here. These notes work. And then, I'll get a little ahead of myself, but those, I can bend those notes. And even that one sometimes. For different solos. So I know I can bend those in that position over any progression. Then we start thinking, oh, what else can we add in with that progression? Well, I can do some double stops. Then I know I can do some hammer rounds and pull off. You just saw me do that right there. So then this position one isn't just like you're sitting there going, which gets boring, repetitive, makes you stale. Now you've got an arsenal of weapons in just one position. Now that's an example of how you'd use the pentatonic scale to your advantage. But there's all this applies across the entire fretboard. So I know that this note I can bend. Well, where else is that note on the fretboard? Well, we know for one, it's at the octave. So you know if you're playing an A, which is A minor pentatonic, that's going to work every time. You could bend those notes every time. And at the octave, you could bend those notes. And the double stops. Sounds pretty cool on octave up. But those notes also exist at other points in the fretboard. Other positions have these. Right there, that note. We could also find that note here. That's another pentatonic position. And you try and find the other notes you bend. Some of my favorite bending ones. Find where the bends are. You don't have to memorize shapes. Just say, oh, I know I can bend that. I know that if I'm in the key of A, position one, I bend that. But I also know that position four, I can bend this. And then I can try it in other places. Oh, there's position, uh, I can't remember if that's five. Yeah, I think it's five. Yeah, five. So um, learning how to discover the fretboard with feeling, I got to touring level without theory, without thinking about theory. It was all based on studying other guitar players. So I, I listened then to these players and how to get a good sound. You know, everybody talks about getting a good tone. What, what can I do to make my tone better? Find your favorite guitar player and without pedals, and without effects and pedals, maybe a little reverb, start playing their style by just listening. Listen and then try and recreate to the most exact detail. Like if I'm, if I'm trying to do clapped and sunshine of your love, well, I gotta get woman tone first of all. So roll back the tone knob and I've got the, the bridge pickup on and turn up the volume a little bit. Now that bend right there is something you can't teach in a theory book. Yeah, we can show it as a wavelength like vibrato. We can show the vibrato, but we can't show the, the intensity of the feeling of that vibrato. Oh, and there's a certain way he hits that note that makes it sound special. Or another example, we can't teach people in theory how to sound like Leslie West and get thick bends.
teach that in school. It only comes from listening and then recreating. And what you learn through that is you create your own style on top of other guitar player styles. And all of a sudden you've got all these weapons that you've made at various points of the neck. Just hearing that, that fattens that sound doesn't happen on day one. I'm picking differently for that. I know that I can't let the note ring out too long. Like if I got loose with it, that's, that's really too much sustain. But from listening to the way he picks, you can hear how the note's fat, thick, but it doesn't, doesn't seem to sustain long. It's just. So it's fat, it's punchy, it's snappy. And that's what you get by listening. So that's the whole point of this is you can become a really good, good, really good guitarist quicker by picking out some of your favorite styles of guitar players. Find like three. Find three guys, four guys that you really like. Study their licks. Listen to the solos they play. Try and learn those solos. And when you learn those solos, you're going to get those licks. Like I show you in That Smell and all these various, these various licks right here, Sunshine Your Love, Leslie West. We can just go on and on seeing various licks and studying them. And then you say, okay, how do they fit in with the pentatonic scale or what type of scale are they playing? And that's where the growth is happening. And in a year or two from being a complete beginner, you'll end up be gigging. It doesn't have to be where you're stuck saying, man, all these notes, how do I, you get stuck in the book work, you get stuck in the weeds and you can't move. That's why, I'll, tell, I'll leave you with one story. There was a guitar player that I grew up with and we would jam frequently and, and he would do a lot of rhythm stuff. He was trying to get into lead and I would like play lead. So we're like doing like A. Some stuff like that. And he's like, man, I would love to play like that. So then I said, well, it's fine. You know, you know the pentatonic scales, right? He's like, yeah, yeah. And I got them all memorized by heart. I got, I got them all, but I, I don't have feeling. And I'm thinking, play some bends and try some licks out. But even the licks sound technical. Everything seemed to sound technical with him. And he wanted to break out of that shell. Well, the way I helped him break out of his shell was said, study other players. And when you play notes, don't just think of it as tab. He was learning a lot off of tab. Like a note would say bend. And he might bend like this. But that sounded really stale. So I said, just let the notes play. Practice the notes sustaining longer. Practice some vibrato. Change up your dynamics. Play harder or softer. And mimic what great blues players have always done. Even if you're not a blues player. Think about somebody like B.B. King. Think about how he lays into a note. Stevie Ray Vaughan, how he lays into a note. Try and copy that. Even if you're technical, copying that will make you get the feeling. So I hope this helps you in your guitar journey. Something that's really helped me. Don't get too dragged down by theory. Try going into something that involves more feel, application-based, because if you learn through application, the theory is gonna make more sense to you later on, even if you don't know everything up front. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.